Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of my high-end and luxury blushes from least to most favorite. So if you want to see what comes out on top, then just keep watching. If you hear like screaming or yelling in the background, my neighbors are having a pool party that I wasn't invited to and they're being quite noisy. I can tell my filming schedule is going to fight a lot with them this summer. If you haven't already yet checked it out, a couple of weeks ago I posted my entire blush collection video. So if you just want a quick brief overview of all of the blushes that I own, check that out. Also, the blushes that I own in face palettes, that's a separate video called my face palette collection video. And then earlier, of course, I posted ranking my affordable blush collection. I had to break it up into two between affordable and high end to make my life a little bit easier and also just kind of depending on your preference for spending money. I think this really divides it up in a really great way. Due to the amount of blushes that I have in the high end and luxury categories, I'm only doing individual blush specifically. I know I have a lot of other formulas and face palettes, not including that, not including cream blushes either, just good old single pan individual powder blushes. So I have 24 different formulas to speak about, just like I did with my affordable version as well. I grouped them by formula rather than specific colors. Like for example, I have like five Kylie's they count as one category. You guys know, make sure you check out Kelsey Brianna J's channel. She's the person who originally inspired me to do this ranking series that you guys seem to love. So I love blushes. Blushes are like one of my favorite steps of my makeup routine. So I am so excited for today's video. So we're gonna start off at number 23, the least favorite high-end blush in my collection. Honestly, I really didn't know how to categorize this. I do put it in with my blush drawer, but this is the NARS Orgasm Illuminating Loose Powder. And the reason why this is in dead last is because, first of all, I can't really use it for anything. It's one of those weird colors where if I were to put it on my face as a highlighter, it's too dark. But then also, if I put it on my cheek as a blush, it's way too shiny. You can kind of do whatever you want with this powder. But it's a little bit odd for my skin tone. If you're lighter than me, you can definitely use it as a blush. But then you have to really, really like a super shiny blush because this does have a very illuminating finish. And then as a highlighter, this is going to be beautiful on medium to deeper skin tones. But for me, it just doesn't get used. It's not made for me. I'm not saying it's a bad product. It just does not work for me and my skin complexion. Number 22. Now, this is not a bad product at all. This actually is very good. I just, for whatever reason, never reach for it. And that's why it's ranking at 22. And this is the Becca Luminous Blush in Camellia. This is the only one of its kind that I have in my collection. And it's a gorgeous shade. And I love the luminosity that it brings to my face but that being said I just never reach for it so that is why it is ranking so low not a bad formula and if you can get them on sale they're a really nice formula but it just doesn't get used for me. Number 21, these are an old time classic and they are very nice, but again, I'm not very attracted to picking them up very often. And these are the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blushes. That being said, I actually use Tarte blushes in my makeup kit because the lasting power on these are incredible. I don't really love their application. I think that sometimes they can kind of stick to one area a little bit and they don't blend out as easily as I would like, but their staying power definitely makes up for it. I just, you know, with the collection that I have. I don't reach for them very often. So I have two shades. I have Party and Concept. Both of these I think I got in the Sephora gift with purchase and I don't have anything really against these blushes other than they aren't as blendable as ones that I prefer and I love a nice soft blendable blush and if I'm looking for something where I need my blush to actually stay on all day this is the kind of formula that I will go for but makeup lasts on me pretty well for the most part so I'm not in desperate need of a super long lasting formula. Number 20 is this Pretty Vulgar blush and Pretty Vulgar I feel like wasn't that like a fail at Sephora they no longer sell it but this is in the shade Hush Blush I got it in a BoxyCharm and I like this because I love the color I'm not as big of a fan of the formulation I personally think that it has a little bit too much pigmentation for me and my complexion if you have more of a medium or deeper skin tone you might really like the formula that this has but I find that when I put it on my face it's just too much at once and I really have to work to blend it out so for me for in one swoop I can't just get it on my cheeks I know I have to work for it to really get this to work and it's a very pretty color and I don't think it's a bad formula it's just not my preference as far as a blush formula goes number 19 I know it's kind of surprising how low this is ranking but if I'm being quite honest I just don't 
grab for this that much. And this is the NARS Individual Shadow in Galu. I'm not even sure, but it is a nice kind of mauve cool berry color. And if I'm grabbing for a NARS blush, normally I like their formulas in their palettes a little bit more. I just don't grab for individual blushes too much if I have them in a palette. I love individual blushes. I'm not saying I pick palettes over the individuals, but if I'm thinking I want to play with the NARS formula, I'm not going to grab this tiny little thing. So that is the reason why it is ranking where it's ranking for me. It's just inconvenient and I have so many other NARS blush palettes that I would use over this guy. Number 18 is from ABH and this is the Blush Trio in Peachy Love. I don't have anything bad to say about this but I also don't have anything extremely amazing to say about this either. It's a pretty generic run-of-the-mill formula. It blends fine. The colors are nice. I'm not a huge warm blush gal. For me, kind of my preference for every day to lift up my face. I like a pink color and even though I am wearing like a warmer blush color right now, this is an extremely warm blush trio so I don't grab for it that often which of course it's like why would you have this if you don't wear warm blush very often. I mean this was given to me as a gift and I do reach for this when I'm wearing a really warm look and I know I want a warm cheek to match with that. So this doesn't go unused and the formula is fine. I just don't care too much for the color. Number 17 is from Ofra and this is the Samantha March duo and this is the Chiclet blush duo and it's not bad at all. Again, I love my blushes. <laughs> For me, I stay away from this if I don't have a lot of time to get ready because she really, really pigmented and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think if I was in Samantha's position as well doing a collaboration, I also would have gone with a more pigmented formula just because you want it to be as inclusive as possible if you are limited to a certain number of products that you're coming out. And it is a beautiful color. This was actually in my favorites the following month, I do believe. You have the shimmery side. I don't really like how the shimmery side's a little bit more deeper on the skin. So for my complexion, I just don't find this color to be the most flattering or easy to use. I have to work with it and it is really gorgeous. But just looking at all the blushes I have, this is just where I happen to fall. It's not bad though. Number 16 is the Patrick Ta blush in She's Sincere and everybody seems to be so enamored by his makeup line. I haven't drank the Kool-Aid yet. I don't know. I don't think I've tried any of his products that I didn't like but I also didn't love any of his products either. I know he has some new stuff coming out. I'm interested in picking up like one or two items from the new launches, but I've never been excited for his launches. And I was really disappointed with this blush. I had high hopes for it. Like it's not bad. It's a pretty color. It's not too pigmented, which I like. And that's kind of where a lot of the blushes that I spoke of previously where they ranked where they ranked because <laughs> They were too pigmented. This is not, but it's almost the opposite problem. So if you have very fair skin, this is beautiful. It's not going to show up too harsh on you. And I do like its buildable formula. I like the color a lot as well. I think it's ranking where it's ranking though, because I was more so disappointed by it. Like it's not that great. It's not bad either. My expectations for it were so high and it's really just a generic blush formula, if you ask me. Moving on to number 15, we have the MAC Glow Play blushes. From this point on, definitely all of the formulas I'm talking about. I do love a lot and I do really enjoy these. I like cream blushes but day-to-day -day basis I still love going for my powder blushes and though these aren't really cream blushes they will dry out because they're creamier. They're that putty texture. And I have this really bright color in no shame because I do struggle to get pigmentation from this. And it seems like I'm the only person on the planet that struggles because when I have to use my shade Grand right here, I do kind of have to dig in. I love the finish on this, on the face. I did get a question as to whether or not I thought these were good for more mature skin types. And yes, I do. They will be beautiful on your skin. But I do struggle to get the colors to show up. That's why I brought the brightest one but once it's on the cheeks I'm like ooh, my cheeks look good and juicy and plump but that being said I didn't have as amazing of an experience as other people seem to have number 14 I don't know I really like these blushes guys and they are the Kylie cosmetics blushes I love the colors in her line I bought most of the individual ones that came out at the time that I bought these uh, you can get them at Ulta now and they aren't a special formula but what's special to me really is the colors in her line. I think they are so wearable. They're up my alley. The formula 
it's not gonna knock your socks off, but it's a great classic matte blush. It blends onto your cheeks very easily. It doesn't apply too much color. If you want a pink pop on your cheek, she has really great colors for that and they get the job done. I don't have anything bad to say about the formula. Nothing is exceptional, but the colors in her line are gorgeous and they do the job that they need to do. Number 13. I wanted to rank this higher. I really did, but I need this to be in a lighter shade for me to rank this higher. And this is the Natasha Denona Bloom Highlighting blush so this is the mini bloom blush and I really like this I think the formula is gorgeous I love the color it's just a little too pigmented for my skin tone if you have a medium to deep skin tone I haven't heard of a person who didn't like this but if you're more on the fair side she's really really bright and really really pigmented so you have to use an extremely light hand and by light hand I mean I would use a stipple brush go in twice wipe it off on my hand and then go in on my cheek for me to get this to work also it's just I love the color I love the formula I love all of that but it's not everyday friendly for me number 12 this is a blush that I personally find to be underrated I don't ever hear anybody talking about this because it is a Korean brand but I love this blush so much so these are from Mamond. They're like their flower pot blushes or something and uh, they have the prettiest colors and what I love most about this blush is the finish on the cheek. It has this very subtle natural glow to it so it's not going to keep your face looking flat. It's going to add some life into your face and when you turn you will see a little bit of a sheen on your cheek and there's something about it that is such a natural flat. All of my other blushes, they don't have a finish like this. It's so subtle and so satiny. I really love this. And you can get these from the Mamand website. And also I saw them on Amazon as well. They're a little bit harder to get your hands on, but I really like this. Number 11. I mean, these are classics at this point. So many people love these. And these are the Cover FX Monochromatic Blush Duos. My most used has to be Warm Honey. So for this, you get a shimmery color and then a corresponding matte color. These are super buttery, creamy formulas. This one's a little bit too deep for me. Like it has a little bit too much pigmentation, but they're so creamy. They blend out so beautifully. And if you want a little bit of added dimension to your cheek, you are more than welcome to add that shimmery color right here. Or even sometimes I'll use it to blend uh, my cheek color, which would be this and my highlight together to kind of work to fuse those and they are just so pretty. Mojave Mauve is a pinkier color and then Soft Peach. This is kind of my favorite because it's the most wearable, but I really love these. These are talked about for a good reason. Number 10, and you guys asked where these were in my blush collection video. They were in a different drawer, so I forgot to pull them out, but I've really been enjoying them. I haven't gotten too much of a chance to talk about them, but they are the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Blush. If it were up to me and changing the formula, I think I would add a little bit more pigmentation to it because I do feel like the finish of this can overpower the color itself but overall they are gorgeous blushes and if you love glowy soft blushes these are the way to go you really can't apply too much I do find though that when I build too much on because I want more of the color that I see in the pan my cheek can have a little bit too much of shimmery overload but if you apply just a little bit it really gives you a soft glow if you are more fair you will really like these and I mean even medium skin tones these are beautiful the finish is beautiful but I do find that as somebody who loves blush and a little bit of a clown cheek I do desire a little bit more depth and color on my face with these but they are so stunning and great for every day great for tinted moisturizers great for that summer makeup kind of look i love those for that number nine is the mac cosmetics blush formula i have two to share with you melba is one of the most used blushes in my collection i know it doesn't look like it but it really is a solid formula nothing amazing special about them other than they blend really beautifully they apply the perfect amount of color these have been classics in everybody's makeup collection for a long time because the amount of colors that they offer in their line are endless and you're getting a good product i also have this patrick star collaboration blush and it's two existing colors i can't quite remember what they are but one of you guys did tell me that these two colors actually do exist in the line already and I 
love the formula in this little compact it seems like it's even a little bit more creamier so i love my mac blushes i think that even though it may seem sometimes mac has kind of gone downhill a little bit their blush formula is still spectacular number eight i have a tom ford baby here and this is the sheer cheek duo in lavender lure so of course you get very luxurious packaging. I don't really know why it's called Lavender Lure because it's not very lavender, but it's a gorgeous glowy cheek product. So these don't pack too much pigmentation to them, which I really like. They're very soft and they give you a healthy glow to the cheek. I'm not going to say this is something that I reach for a ton because it's not, but I just love owning this. It's so luxurious and it is really pretty and soft on the cheek. And if you have the money to spend, I definitely would recommend this blush a lot. It's very expensive, but I enjoy it. Numero 7, we have Sigma's Corderosa blush. I mean, at this point, they have a whole palette that was kind of inspired from this blush. This is one of my favorite everyday blushes. It's so easy to grab for. It's this perfect coral rose color, and oh, the formula of it's really smooth. I have a second one of this because I love this color so much. I want to put one in my makeup kit, honestly because it's just such a wearable versatile color I feel comfortable wearing this and the formula of it is also spot on moving on to number six again another underrated blush that I feel like more people need to know about this needs to be popular and this is from Suwasu and this is a, another Asian brand I believe it's Korean this is their radiance blusher in number one pink harmony this is one of the most beautiful blushes very luxurious and you get three different tones of pink in here I love the way that it smells. I love the glow that it gives my cheek. I love how you can kind of go brighter or more soft, but if you really enjoy pink blushes and also kind of that luxury experience, definitely have an experience with Suwalsu. This has been one of my most favorite blushes this year. I can't stop using it. I love the tone of this color too. I just love how much brightness and youth the pink brings to my cheek without it being too pink. It's just a gorgeous color. Number five has to go to my Charlotte. Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek blushes. I've explained a billion times on my channel how they work. So basically you have an outer ring and that color is supposed to kind of go all over your cheek wherever you would normally apply blush. And then the center shade you're supposed to put right in the center to just add a pop. I mean sometimes I'll do that, sometimes I won't. I just enjoy the ease of the formula on this. It's never really too pigmented. It's easy to blend out if you put too much on. It's just is really soft and it does have a very, very subtle sheen to it, which keeps your face from looking flat or dry. So I have Love is the Drug if you want a really bright pink. I also have Pillow Talk, which is more for neutral lovers. I love Pillow Talk especially because you can actually use the center pop shade to kind of give you a little bit of a highlight. And I think it's really stunning. Sex on Fire, again, another more neutral one. And then we also have Love Glow. And this one is very soft. So if you have a fair complexion, you might really like this. And you know, I like soft pink blushes. So this is kind Kind of a go-to for me. Number four, you guys know I love Dior blushes and these are just so cute, so simple, and I absolutely love these. So these are the Dior Backstage blushes. They're a little bit more affordable than their regular line blushes, but I just, I love the packaging on these. And there's two colors. There's pink, which is my personal favorite. It's very intimidating, bubblegum kind of pink color, but it's not so intimidating on the face. And if you pair this with a pink highlighter, it's just scrumptious pink deliciousness. And then there also is a coral one. This one I'm not as keen on as the pink one, but it is really pretty for the summer. And I just think the formula of this, it gives so much brightness to your face and this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea. They are a matte finish, but they just blend out really nice on the cheek. They look really good and the colors that they came out with I think were spectacular. I use these all the time. These are probably some of my most used blushes in my collection because they're so easy to grab for and they're always the shades that I want. So these next two, number three, are kind of the same but they're different. So these are just the regular rouge blushes from Dior and Dior has some of the best blushes in my opinion in the industry. I just Love Dior blushes so much. The two that I'm showing you today are specifically from the Color Games collection, but they have stolen my heart. Unlike the backstage ones, these do have a little bit of a sheen to them, which I prefer. So this one is Pink Pong, which is a pink shade. It is similar to the pink 
in the back stage as well but the formula and the finish on the skin is a little bit different i prefer this one a little bit more and then we also have this peach one right here so kind of the same as the back stage where you have a pink and a more peachy one but these are a different formula these do have a scent that very clean Dior scent to them and I hate the packaging of these. I much prefer the backstage packaging but these are more classic Dior and I think the formula of them is spectacular. Really simple, easy to use and just very easy for me to reach for. Number two. So these are the newest additions to my collection and you guys were the ones that convinced me to bite the bullet and purchase these because they're so tiny but I love them and these are are the Chantecaille blushes so they look a little boring right now but when you open them they are so cute now I wish they were a bit bigger I wish you got a little bit more product I have emotion in my hand right now this one is the one that I'm wearing on my cheek today they do give you a very very subtle dimension to the cheek just that little bit of sheen and then I also have bliss which is the butterfly one this one is a little bit more light kind of everyday light springy type of makeup but I have been loving these blushes ever since I got them. They're just the perfect formula, such beautiful colors, and it hurts to spend $40 on these tiny little things, but I do plan on, whenever there's a sale, kind of working on building my collection of these because the formula of these they're really nice and very, very easy to use. Not an intimidating formula at all. So let's talk about my number one favorite formula in my entire blush collection. You cannot beat them. I only have one color to show you, but that is because I have all of the blush palettes that they have come out with. So I have a lot in their line. This is just the only one singularly that I bought. And these are the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes. Like I said, my collection is a lot bigger than it would seem in this video, but this is Luminous Flush, which is one of my go-to everyday blushes as you can see it's pink and nobody can get the formula down like hourglass there's no other way to describe it on your face other than ambient the formula in here is so finely milled it applies to the cheek without you having to do any sort of work and it never applies too much color it never applies too little color and it's just like you pop it on your cheek and you're good to go you have a youthfulness to the cheek it makes your face look alive and there's only so many adjectives I can use to describe a blush, but whatever positive adjective that exists out there for blush, just know that this has it. This is hands down the best blush formula I have ever used. There's a reason why every time there's a blush palette that comes out for them, I am more than happy to pick it up because these are me in a blush. I love them. They make me happy. So that is it. I did it. That was me ranking my entire high-end and luxury blush collection from least to most favorite. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below what your favorite high-end formula is. I would love to know. Do you agree with me? Do you have something different to say? I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and enjoying the start to your summer. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I hope you would consider taking the time to do so. I would really appreciate it. And I will be sure to see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.